that I sold the Bhagavad Gita there. Yeah. Yeah. And the guy sees me from inside. He comes running out. He said, you cheated me. <laughs> I said, why? He looked at me and says, you cheated me. You said this was the book on the techniques of eroticism. And therefore I come out here to thank you. <laughs> because you're right, this book is about real love, which you gave to me. <laughs> so, such a conversion of intellectualism in a person, you don't get that result every day. Most people, they simply don't understand what we are all about. What are these crazy Krishnas all about? Why they are doing this and this and this? What is, why they call somebody the Supreme Personality of God? People can't imagine a Supreme Personality. They have been so much taught there is no God, there is no God, God has no personality, God has no thing you feel. So when they hear Hare Krishna, Supreme Personality of God, oh, God. <coughs> these guys are God, you know. Huh? <coughs> People can't figure it out why we offer obeisances. <coughs> I mean, when you become a Christian priest, you have to offer dandavats. You know that? The time a Christian priest becomes an ordained priest, he has to give full sashtanga But we have that as a false our tradition. The rosary is the japa money. Actually, jap. Jap also means the bottom of a rose. So when they have a rosary, they're actually chanting Japa. <clears throat> and it's so strange, they don't have 108. No. They have 54. Mm -hmm. Half of it. Mm -hmm. So, there's so many similarities in the world of spirituality. Ex excessive <coughs> similarities. But really the people in the world until you really feel touched by this Krishna element of in your heart, you can't figure it out. You, you really can't. You want to or you don't want to. Most people, <coughs> they prefer not to be exposed. They, they go. The Krishna group. Nice guys. <laughs> Have you dancing? Yeah. Do, do what you want. <laughs> you can come out. <laughs> come on, jump out of the window. <laughs> we have good food. <laughs> Actually, Prabhupada said the world will be safe for Prashant. Prabhupada said that we can conquer the world by our food. That is, that, that is, that he said that he, he organized a big prasham distribution because only when you talk about food, and many people, they're afraid of our food. They don't eat what they have. They may, may say, I have something inside, you know. I was so happy once. <laughs> there in Colombia, there was one magazine, and the owner of the magazine, he didn't like us. I don't know, maybe it was a Christian. I never met him. But he sent his reporters to find the dirt on the devotees. So they went in the temple, they looked everywhere. Are we allowed to make an article? An article? So they went and looked at the cooking book, the recipes. Mm -hmm. They looked, how do we leave, how do we, when we get up in the morning, 
What do we do? How we take our showers, how we put on the coping, everything, you know? They, they investigate, and they were from a scandalous newspaper. The, one of those slimy newspapers just want to bring bad news. But the newspaper reported he had to find something because the order was to find something bad on us. No, no. How do they do? How they manage the money? What do they do? These Krishna people. So, when the article came out, I was scared. I was like, oh, because the whole country was reading that newspaper, you know. I said, what's going to come to this? Yes, 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 I get up early, yeah. <laughs> like the kind of, yes, yes, <laughs> and then they say, but we know what's the secret of them. <laughs> <laughs> they put camphor into the food <laughs> so that the people will be like, <laughs> sexually subdued, <laughs> they become impotent by the camp. <laughs> That's how they get the people to do service there and control the sex life. <laughs> I said, wow, I wish it would be that easy. <laughs> Give a little bit careful to everybody. <laughs> We can control sex like this. I said, if that's the only thing wrong they could find with us, I said, like, Whew. good, good, good. Huh? Well, maybe, but people are afraid of what's in the food. People are afraid. What? Why are these people like this? What's happening to them? No? And there's many people that confess, like we had once a confession day. It was spontaneous, it wasn't organized, so they, everybody was telling how they became devotees. And the first one he said, you know, I came to the temple, I tasted the food, I found it wonderful, I came again and came again, I became a devotee because of the prashat. <laughs> then the next one said, I'm very embarrassed to say it, but it's just like the one who tell before me, I also came because of the food. <laughs> Third one, the same thing. I mean, everybody becomes a devotee because of the food. <laughs> then came the number four. It says, I didn't come because of the food. But I stayed because of the food. <laughs> so, so the prasadam is a very important because there's no blood. And there's not even supposed to be transgenics. There's not supposed to be even be agrochemicals if we are going by our what we want to do. Maybe sometimes we cannot come up to the standard. There's, there's nothing animal origin unless it comes from an animal protected sanctuary. Because we, we have also, even our food has been a little difficult because this society is so contaminated. Like practically when you eat white sugar, you're not strictly vegetarian. White sugar is filtered through bones. So, so I mean, to be very strictly, strictly vegetarian in the society or vegan is a very difficult job. Nowadays, it's getting a little easier because there's such a, a vegan movement which has produced so many vegan foods that we have some great, like yesterday's mayonnaise in this, uh, in this incredible uh, uh, potato uh, beet salad, uh, which was really incredible and so delicious and it was vegan. <laughs> and Gora Shakti was happy. Yeah. Nice. He could eat it. Nice. Huh? Huh? So, 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 so in this way, uh, things have become a little easier lately, but in the beginning, we didn't do anything about it for the fast. You know, a good prashada meant halva, lots of sugar, and then eat the halva and everybody blissed out. No? But it wasn't strictly vegetarian because if it's the white sugar is filtered through bones, 
how can it remain untouched and pure? Hmm? So, all these type of difficulties we are facing, but uh, the devotees and their food, they have one thing they always do, they take it on the plate and they offer it to Krishna. My dear Lord, this is Prabhupada's order, we give offer everything to you. And they said, this is such a loving thing, you, you, you cultivate the, the land with love, you reap the fruits with love, you prepare the food with love, you offer the food with love, and you distribute the food with love. This is a five types love potentialized food. And you know in homeopathic or in, in, in what is our uh, charges of memory through the sound vibration, through the love vibration, no? That is what energizes things. That's what really makes it. <coughs> that what converts people. This loving atmosphere, this loving tool. Nobody comes in the temple and takes, gives somebody a plate, hey, take your food. <laughs> <laughs> like they distribute food in a jail, no? Okay, take it. <laughs> no, Prashadam is always. <laughs> A little more? Huh? It, is, it has to be like that. It's all love. Otherwise it doesn't work. It's not meant to be another thing. We are not obliged to distribute prasadam. We are invited to distribute prasadam. We are not obliged to have a guest. We are honored to have a guest. We are not obliged to go on Sankirtan. We are honored to be able to contact our brothers and sisters around the world, giving them some nectar from our Guru Deva. But now I wanted to explain this book story. Well, this book story, so we went out on Sankirtan, young boys and girls, just, <sighs> Prabhupada wants us to go out on Sankirtan. It's not easy, you know. German winter, <laughs> freezing there, <laughs> only to get a, a donation you have to pull out like it. <laughs> Push it and hope you don't lose it because it's like it with the gloves, you know. <laughs> and you, you're like freezing up there. The people look at you, what you want? <laughs> really? <laughs> I had one devotee stand up. <laughs> one of my god brothers, we always were doing Sankirtan competition. But I was like the one, please thank you. But my brother, Megapati, he would do like this. Gentlemen, look at this one second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he would put the hand on their shoulder and they couldn't give the book back. Uh, uh, he, was, he was a real star book distributor. <laughs> and we others, we could say, no, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't put my hand in there and just cry to the people, please buy the book. <laughs> <laughs> but book distribution, you know, it's, it's, it's the top activity of contacting people. If Prabhupada would not have sent us out like that, how would the world have gotten to know that these Krishna people exist? Of course, when they came, like when we were four people in the city dressed in dhotis, in, in the end of the day, the people thought that the Krishnas are everywhere. Huh? Because a devotee stands out, no? He stands out in a crowd. No? Oh, what's that? Huh? Good colors, good dress, no? I mean, we got the fashion going, you know? Hmm? <laughs> So, Prabhupada, nobody was doing. He knew everything. He's a pure body of Krishna. He knew everything God wanted. At least that's what I believe. Because he put it in his books every page. So, 
So he told us the whole world can be saved by these books. Like they, we used to say amongst ourselves, Srila Prabhupada's books are the law books for the next 10,000 years. Well, 10,000 years? It's a good, good time, no? And they're going to be the law books? I have the law books. So that's what we, we I'm talking about how we were talking amongst ourselves, no? how Prabhupada encouraged us. But you know, to sell a book is not easy. And many people become angry. <laughs> Why are you disturbing me? You? So as a distributor, you have to be real humble. Hmm? There was one devotee, he was too much. He was too much. He would stand on the on the on the place where the cars stop. Or he just go. He had, he, he dressed in some green khaki suit, something. He, he almost looked like a policeman, no? So he would just go <laughs> stop the car and the people when you see an authority figure like that uh, who dares to stop you in the car well he just went like this so they went like and he uh, believe it or not he gave them this is for you <laughs> this is to be distributed for the upliftment of people who are having troubles in this world. So I don't know exactly what he said, but something was sounded very authoritative. No? Like, there was not much choice of saying, I don't want it. <laughs> so you take it with you. And this is for you, you can give a donation, you each one about 10 euros. <laughs> I mean, you have to understand that people were buying these books without having the slightest idea what they were about. <laughs> Normally when you walk, go buy a book, it's because somebody told you it's a good book, or it was in the bestseller list, or something. Or, but you, in most people don't spend 10, 20 euro on a book, unless they really want to have it. There has to be a big decision inside of you, I want to have a book to buy it. But the people who bought Krishna books, they never had an idea what it was all about. Only like slight little introduction. They just buy them because of the smile of the devotee. He was such a nice person. He smiled and he looked at me so nice. I mean, Sankirtan devotees, they made like so many funny things. You can tell, speak about Sankirtan day and night, there's so many anecdotes and so many sweet experiences, no? Uh, like many times the people tell you, oh, I would like to buy it, I would like to give a donation. Uh, but I have no money, because many people walking around the street, they have no money. Uh, so one of my American god brothers, he used to say, you may be broke, but you look so good. <laughs> and then people say, I look so good, okay, give me one. <laughs> they give the last coin to him, you know? Huh? Such, I mean, Sankirtan is almost a heartbreaking affair, you know? You see, you go all the way to touch the people's heart. Their heart. And why? Hey, they're your brothers and sisters. You don't need to know their names for them to become your brothers and sisters. They're already your brothers and sisters. Now you're supposed to realize that and execute that by behaving like a brother and sister. And when people feel that, it's like a It's almost like a Okay, how much you want? Yeah. How much you want? Yeah. Huh? It's, it's, this is a, it's a certain effect because people just don't meet people to deal with them as family. It's always you and me. 
<coughs> there is always some big barrier everywhere. The barriers created by this prejudice in society and, and creating dualities and castes and all that, no? People don't. I mean, if you take somebody, you know, like the people who are working with the garbage, no? They're carrying the garbage. Everybody says, oh, it's the garbage. It's the garbage. Yeah. Huh? You have them. Hey, come on, they are carrying, they're collecting your garbage, which you throw there. <laughs> they're not the garbage. But if you go to somebody, like usually they're a little bit like untouchable, no? But if you go and take, and go to a garbage can and say, and you give him a hug. <laughs> He hugged me. He hugged me what you want. <laughs> so Sankitan is like that. You hug the world. That's really what you do. That's Krishna consciousness. So anyway, so the time went on. It was pretty difficult to sell all those books. The devotees do it. In some places had been better, in others not so difficult. I went to South America. I, I had a great liberation feeling because in South America, Sankitan was that instead of talking one on one, you immediately went up in the public transport. We do that until today. We stand up there, there's 50 people, 100 people saying, Hey, my friends, here, it's so good to be with you. We have this book, which is really something for us. In South America, people buy the book because they want to have it. But it's also, they want to have it because you said something which touched their heart. It's different there. So we had, we had a different movement there. But nevertheless, here comes the final outcome. Srila Prabhupada's mercy was with us. It was so potential, so amazing, that nowadays, 2017, already 16, 15, 14, all of Srila Prabhupada's books are available on every telephone, on every iPad, every Wi-Fi connection has all of Prabhupada's books in all languages of the world available. That's something. You please show me the copy. You cannot even find famous authors like famous writers. You can find their books for free. Maybe a little here, a little there. But Prabhupada's books are for free on the internet. Oh, there's some others. The internet is so much to read. But in the beginning, the devotees did not want to release Prabhupada's books on the internet. At that time, I took it upon myself and I made an I made a website in the internet called Robin Book. And I took all of Prabhupada's books and I scanned them and put them all on the internet. <laughs> the website was called Robinbook.org. So Practically, that forced the devotees to change their mind. Today, they accept it and they put all of books, all of Prabhupada's books in all languages for free on the web. Because it's ridiculous. We have these books to give to the world, and now we want to recondition this. I never sold a book in my life. I distributed them and received a few donations by the Krishna's grace, but I never went out as a salesman. Because if I want to be a salesman, if I want to make money, I'm not going to sell little books for little donations. I'm going to sell something like helicopters or something like that. <laughs> something uh, which makes money, you know? But, but, so now we can give the books to the world. Now, what is our job? What is the book distribution of today? 
book distribution of today is to behave in such a way with people. To behave, to treat people in such a way so, 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 so wonderful that they want to read the books of your guru who inspired you to do that. Because they can just put Bhakti Vedanta Swami Bhagavad Gita. There it is. Everybody, you don't need to pay. They already pay for the for the Wi-Fi or whatever connection they have. All the books in all the language, Latvian, Greek, Arabian, all the languages of the world. You can find Prabhupada's books. This is historical. But most people don't know it. They don't take notice. They don't take notice. This little telephone has the entry to the spiritual world. I mean, nowadays you can even take darshan of Radha Raman and darshan of Radha Shamsunda and darshan of Radha Damoda. Nowadays uh, the cell phones opening so many things and it's so easy in the internet to simply get lost. <coughs> It's a place we really get lost, that's most likely. But that's already there, this getting lost principle is already there. Now we are going to the get found principle. We are not concerned about the get lost principle because everybody's already lost. That is the famous song you must all remember. I once was lost but now I'm found. Remember that song? Mm -hmm. huh? It's a classic. Mm -hmm. I once was lost and now I'm found. This is the conversion song. When I lost in the world of not believing anything, I am hopeless and then I was found I was found by a devotee who gave me the grace of Shraddha of face. No, that's a face song. No? When face was delivered to me, get me today the text, the full text of this song. Okay. I want to read it, reread it. It's like a really Oida song. Uh, then, then now I, I'm found. Now I have faith again, now I have joy again, now I have strength to fight against all the difficulties in life. I can do it, I can conquer, I can conquer lust, greed and anger, the most difficult to conquer. Lust, anger and greed, the three royal roads to hell, it says. They're decorated, but they're not going to Krishna. Going somewhere else. <clears throat> so I have found Prabhupada. I found the faith in Krishna, in the deity, in the holy name. So this is our prasadam program. Whatever we do, we are doing coaching, we are doing yoga. You know, like we have a yoga festival. In, in Colombia, almost monthly, and that it's it's the eco the the eco yoga festival, and we have all all sometimes ten fourteen thousand people have come to our festival monthly. So I have a chance to touch people. They're already coming for yoga. I gave a chance to convince 14,000 people to open this Gita on their phone and start reading it. I don't have to give them big books like this everywhere, which are nowadays very few people manage. I mean, how many of you have a big book like this in your luggage when you came here? Two people. <laughs> People don't carry big books anymore. That is the, a new timing has come. What to do? Before, 
<laughs> want to travel somewhere with all of Kaufman's books. That's a suitcase full of books. The airline will refuse to put them up. So it's, it's kind of a thing, you know. If you can have the same thing, like sometimes some devotees surprise me. I say, I want to sing this song. Oh, anybody has a songbook? And then over some somebody shovels a, 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 a telephone into my into my eyes. Here's a song. He found the song on the, on the web. Uh, so, so in other words, things are shifting, you know, and those shifting. But nowadays, the bug in South America. Acharyo Brahmanu Murti Pita Murti Prajapate Brata Marutpate Murti Matashakshat Kshitishtanu Dayaya Bhagini Murti Dharmasyat Matiti Swayam Agner Abhya Gato Murti Sarva Bhutani Chatmana El Acharya, el maestro espiritual, que enseña el conocimiento védico y da iniciación ofreciendo el cordón sagrado, es la personificación de todos los Vedas. Del mismo modo, el Padre personifica al Señor Brahma, un hermano, al Rey Indra, la Madre, al planeta tierra y una hermana a la misericordia un visitante es la personificación de los principios religiosos y el invitado personifica al semidios Agni las entidades vivientes personifican al Señor Vishnu, la suprema personalidad de Dios. This is from the sixth canto, chapter 7, text number 29 and 30. Random. I took this verse randomly. I just opened it. Hmm? This is the quality of Srimad Bhagavatam. Now listen what Prabhupada explains. Las instrucciones morales de Chanakya Pandi nos indica Atmavat salva Bhuteshu. Debemos ver a todas las entidades vivientes a nuestro mismo nivel. Esto significa que no debemos menospreciar a nadie, considerándolo inferior. Justo lo que iba a acabar de explicar en muchas palabras. Paramatma está en el cuerpo de todos, y por lo tanto, todos deben ser respetados como templos de la suprema personalidad de Dios. Este verso explica diversas formas de mostrar respeto, bien sea al Guru, al Padre, a un hermano, a una hermana y, una, y un visitante, o un personaje que tú encuentras en Santa. En cualquier parte, sin conocer su nombre. Por favor, mande este verso tal cual a mi correo que lo distribuyo porque es una inspiración un verso de esto en qué otra escritura encuentras algo así dígamelo ¿Ah? el Bhagavatam es lleno de estas instrucciones si tú lees el Shrima Bhagavatam después de esto no puede ser un monstruo andando por el mundo dándole dolor a los demás no puedes por eso Shima Bhagavatam es la máxima joya que se puede encontrar en la literatura. Y quien se dedicó, quien se dedicó de escribirlo, publicarlo, financiarlo, Prabhupada financiaba en una manera u otra 
Europa no tenía un solo patrocinio de alguna industria o de algo que financió la impresión de sus libros. Le cuento una historia cuando Prabhupada quiso imprimir el primero vez el libro de Krishna. Si lo propio estuve en Londres y había acabado de, de publicar o de escribir el libro de Krishna y no tenía Lakshmi para imprimir y Prabhupada dijo a Shamsunda vaya y pídele a George Harrison para que él done la impresión de este libro. Ustedes han visto la firma George Harrison está en el libro de Krishna ¿Mm? terminando con All you need is love Krishna So Shamsunda dijo a Prabhupada Prabhupada no es bueno si le pedimos plata él puede alejarse él puede sentir que somos como aquellos que todo le piden plata Prabhupada pensó un momento y dijo pídese entonces Sham Shunda no estaba a gusto porque era recién amigo de George Harris y en esa noche tenía una cita en el Apple Studio y tenían varias cosas entonces estaba George Harris en un grupo, una mesa grande así donde estaban todos y Sham Shunda dice George Prabhupada me pedía que yo le pida algo, yo no quiso, pero Prabhupada dijo, sí, pídelo. George preguntó, ¿qué? Prabhupada quiere que tú le apoyes de imprimir el libro de Krishna que él acaba de terminar. George Harris dice, ¿cuánto es? No me recuerdo, ¿no? Como, como 30 mil dólares o algo así. Una suma grande para imprimir. Y George Harrison quedó silencioso. En este momento hubo un trueno justamente encima de la casa de Apple y una cosa que sale ¡pum! a veces usted ha visto estos tipos de trueno que, que lo sacuda a uno de la silla y inmediatamente todas las luces se apagaron como si el sistema eléctrico un momento de silencio por eso y otra vez las luces volvieron y George Harris dice ¿Ya? eso tiene que ser un sí así fue que Prabhupada conseguí el primero Lakshmi para imprimir el libro de Krishna Entonces, nach diesem Blitzeinschlag sagt er es kann wohl keine andere Antwort sein als ja como una seña del cielo que necesita este libro y muchos de nosotros recibimos este libro George Harrison y el libro de Krishna y eso para nosotros en nuestra fe era muy importante porque George Harrison representaba mucho de este, de este movimiento de hípico, yogico de este tiempo ¿no? donde podemos colocar nuestra confianza y pues, el libro de Krishna es el libro revolucionario. El libro de Krishna uno tiene que leerlo, es tan hermoso, tan hermoso. Esa es otra cosa, no es Bhagavad Gita. El libro de Krishna es ya 
El libro de Krishna es la aventura del bhakti, del amor más grandioso. Toda la vida de Krishna. ¿Quién de ustedes ha leído el libro de Krishna? Tres tomos del inicio hasta el final. No saben que se han perdido. You don't know what you have lost for not reading this book. Yes. Sí, pero son los libros uh, de Krishna Book famoso. Se llama Krishna Book and uh, vino en tres tomos. Yo lo conozco que es es uno. Pero quién sabe. ¿Quién sabe el doble? Sí, es en, en contenido es el mismo canto. Sí. Uh, sí. <risa> Tiene todas las historias de Krishna en Vendaval, después en Matura, después en Dwaraka, ¿no? todo lo, lo que está ahí. Un extracto de Lilas increíble. Bueno, preguntas. Questions. The following in the next one in Balabachaya, as you said, is in Balabachaya. Yes. Pushkin. What is this? What is this? Balabachaya and Pushkin Marta han emphasized more. La adoración de Srinath. Srinath fue una deidad que se encontró en Govardhan. No es la Dukupad, pero es Krishna de niño. Y lo adoran a Srinath Ji en Pushti Mark como un niño. Por ello, la posición de Radharani no es tan importante allá. Lo mencionan en las escrituras, pero no le presta mucha atención. Más atención es puesto a Yashodameya, al Vatsalya Rasa. Y Balabacharya y su escuela está encabezado hoy en día por Sriji. Sriji Maharaj. Y yo me encontré con Sriji Maharaj como dos meses atrás. Yo le di un premio a él, a Sriji Maharaj. Y el premio era por financiar y restaurar los tres principales deidades de la Gorya Sampradaya, Radha Govinda Ji, Radha Madalmohan Ji, Radha Gopinata Ji. Templos que estaban en necesidad de ser restaurados, él siendo de otra Sampradaya, financió esto. Entonces yo había ya conocido a Sri Ji Maharaj en un otro encuentro en el pasado, pero cuando yo fui para entregarle el Audaria Award, esto fue a la Pradaya, solo hablando a la gloria de Sri Lapa. Pero esta fue la hermosa experiencia que yo tuve en, en su ashram en Matura. Y nosotros hicimos unas bailes allá y fue, fue un encuentro muy bello, muy importante que ahí le pidiéselo a Vishaka, a Mita, para que ella hace un, uh, un clip de todo lo que acontecía en el ashram de Matur, incluyendo los bailes, el premio, todo. Quizás ella hizo algo, pero que lo haga bien completo para que se comprenda qué pasó allá. Y esto era el día de Govardhan Puja. 
Había una tremenda ofrenda allá. Al final Sri Maharaj se sentó al lado de nosotros y aseguró que cada uno, yo fui con un grupo de 25 de votos, aseguró que cada uno tenía todas las preparaciones en su, en su uh, platico. Algo, datati praticlinati al máximo. Entonces eso, algo de otro santo Y todo eso es resultado mismo de Vaisnava Por eso los tres templos de la Rada Govindaji, Rada, Rada Madanuanji y Rada Govindaji. Rada Govindaji. Y Rada Govindaji fue el templo que yo comencé de restaurar sin plata. Y ellos llegaron con plata y lo hicieron perfecto. Los principales templos de Medellín. De la... de nuestra escuela. Bueno, más preguntas. Sí. Sobre la distribución de Bhagavad Gita, a veces los devotos dicen que en la calle no les gusta distribuir Bhagavad Gita porque la gente puede llegar a su casa y tratar el Bhagavad Gita de cualquier forma y dejarlo por ahí y así. Y ahí yo quería saber qué piensa Gurudeva al respecto. Díganles que, que no traten de ser más inteligente que Shira <risa> Ese le haría bien. Si Prabhupada mandó a nosotros vender los libros por todos lados y ahora hay un super inteligente. Cuidado, coitado, dice en Brasil. Ese ya no es cuidado, es coitado. ¿Cierto? Bueno, solo para añadir, y también he conocido devotos que se volvieron devotos porque, en, porque encontraron un libro que otra persona muchos años atrás compró, pero no, no le prestó atención, pero ellos sí, encontraron, encontraron el libro abandonado, lo leyeron y dijeron, tengo que volver a mi devoto, entonces uno nunca sabe qué caminos va. Uno de ellos se llamaba Ambuyaksha, mi hermano espiritual. Era brasilero, artista, bohemio, loco, que vivía en, los, eh, en Washington, capital de Unidos. En una noche de total hipismo, drogas, se desplomó al lado de una caneca de basura. Entonces, metía la mano a la caneca de basura y agarró un libro de Krishna. Es tal cual, la true story. Y ahí en su delirium de la torre se puso a leer libros. Cuando terminó el libro se fascinó tanto con lo que había leído que buscó la dirección del templo, que está en el mismo libro. Se fue al templo, todo es sucio, todo, con el libro en la mano. Y dijo, yo quiero vivir con ustedes. Y los devotos del templo lo miraron. Así no. Va a tu casa, no dice, yo voy a mi casa. Se sentó en el jardín y seguía leyendo. Después de unas horas, los dos que hacen que se Finalmente le dijeron: Vais a tomarse un baño aquí. ¿Eh? Nunca salió del templo, ahí se quedó. 
<risa> un libro de Prabhupada era un basurero, transformó una vida. Y él llegó hasta de ser un sanyasi y, y predicó mucho en Brasil. Después se fue con Silasita Maharaj. Lo ha dicho un amigo mío de toda la vida. Entonces, poder de los libros Prabhupada nadie lo puede calcular. Entonces es una, una bomba de tiempo ahí a que en algún momento puede transformar quien sea. Más bien nos asombra que no hay transformado más gente. Porque eso es porque la gente lee realmente muy poco. De todas maneras, este es eh, así la historia. Ah, entonces un día Abu Yaksha dio una clase y cuento la historia como lo encontró. Entonces dice, por, le preguntaron, ¿por qué no te fuiste a tu casa a arreglarte? Todo? No, dice, yo tenía miedo que se llene el cupo y ya no tenga espacio para nadie más. <risa> Con ese libro, ese libro ese, va, va, va a estar problema de cupo. <risa> Entonces me tenía miedo que no quiero cupo para llegar. Sí. Sí, es verdad esto, que yo he escuchado muchísimos devotos, porque siempre pregunto a los devotos cómo se han hecho devotos. Hay muchísimos devotos por el mundo que se han hecho devotos, encontrando en la basura un BTG, o un, en la calle, o así, o en una biblioteca, o cualquier cosa. Y, pero muchos. Y yo personalmente encontré, un día limpié la biblioteca de mi abuela, encontré un libro de Prabhupada, Antimateria y Eternidad, pequeñísimo. Inmediatamente me puse a leerlo, era una biblioteca grande, estaba limpiando, limpiando, pero yo me, me paré entre todos los libros y leí todo este libro. ¿no? Entonces, y, y ella lo, se, lo, se lo dieron en, en Suiza. Y el libro llegó a Grecia y paró en una biblioteca. Y entonces... ¡Arriba! Y, 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 y yo quería decir la historia de un devoto que siempre, hablando de Sankita, me se quedó en el corazón, ¿no? Un devoto Namahata en Italia, que era un gran distribuidor de libros. Y era un devoto muy humilde. Antes de ser devoto era un drogadicto. Y él tuvo también una historia similar que cuando llegaron al templo no los aceptaban y tuvieron que existir. Él y su mujer. Él dejó el cuerpo a Brindavana de AIDS después de 15 años que era devoto. Debido a su vida de drogadicto de antes, se manifestó esta enfermedad y dejó el cuerpo a Brindavana. Este devoto distribuía mil libros al día a veces. Y una tarde éramos muchos devotos eh, que estábamos tomando la leche. Y yo no, no era una sankirtanera, pero en este periodo era parte del grupo del sankirtan. Y él vino último. Y, y todos, todos los devotos tomando leche y galletas, con, contando sus historias de sankirtan. Y llegan a Mahatma, todo pequeñito, así era muy pequeño, ¿no? Y todo humilde, y entra en la habitación y se siente en una esquinita. Entonces, y la mata, ¿tú qué has hecho hoy? ¿Cuántos libros has distribuido? Y él dice, yo. Y miraba a los demás como, contad ustedes, ¿no? No, no, ¿cuántos libros has dado? Pues yo he dado mil libros. Y todo, wow. No me podían creer, ¿no? Y, y entonces le dije, pero... ¿Cómo lo conseguiste? No? ¿Cómo lo conseguiste? Mil libros en un día, físicamente es imposible dándolos así, ¿no? Y dice, pues, mira, es muy simple, ¿no? Yo eh, he pensado, mmm, todas estas almas, yo tengo que ir en Sankita, ¿para quién soy yo? Para ir en Sankita y dar estos libros de Prabhupada tan importantes, yo no soy nadie, no lo puedo hacer esto. Mira, todos estos carmes, cómo trabajan cada día, hacen su vida, tienen una, un, un scope en la vida, tienen un plan, son organizados y yo soy nadie, un, un drogadicto que se ha hecho de voto por desesperación, ¿cómo puedo yo dar los libros? No? Entonces, ¿qué voy a hacer? Krishna, ayúdame, ayúdame. Y en este momento le vino la inspiración, había un aparcamiento enorme, donde la gente iba afuera con el coche, 
e tenían que coger un, un billete de no sé cómo pagaban y cogían un billete de una maquinilla ¿no? y él veía que con el coche estaban un poco lejos y hacían así para cogerlo y era un poco difícil y pensó pero esta gente que hacen tienen esos coches grandes y son tan ricos y trabajan tanto y hacen tanto servicio en este mundo material y son tan inteligentes y organizados y yo les quiero servir yo les voy a dar el... se puso ahí donde ellos hacían así y quitaba el, el billetito y ponía los libros de Prabhupada así un paco ¿no? y se lo daba a la persona y le decía por favor, deme una donación y distribuyó libros, mil libros la gente iba y cogía los libros ok y, y, y un día sirviendo las almas de este, lo que decía es que ellos son nuestros hermanos ¿no? él, él tenía esta visión y una otra cosa muy divertida es que él se iba con una furgona en principio de semana y la furgona estaba llena hasta arriba de libros. Y entonces yo le pregunté para una mata, pero tú dónde duermes? Porque está todo cargado de libros, no hay sitio para dormir. Entonces, pues el primer día me siento en la silla del... y, y me duermo un poco así, ¿no? El segundo día y ya tengo bastante espacio para enfilarme arriba. Y dice, el sábado duermo en la cama. Y, poco a la vez decir, y, y cuando dejó el cuerpo de su habitación, eh, él estaba muy enfermo, estaba en la cama, no podía, claro, ir en sangre. Entonces tenía todas las paredes de su habitación tapizadas de libros. Y cada devoto que venía a visitarlo le decía, por favor, Prabhu, por favor, estoy enfermo, ayúdame, no puedo dar estos libros. Coge, coge unos libros y vete a distribuir. Y continuaba a distribuir libros. Thank you, Jack. 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 Jack